Hey everyone, thank you so much for joining me. My name is Scott Dugan, and in this video series, we are going to talk about microphone preamps. After you're done watching this series, you will know what they do, why you need one, how they fit into your workflow, and what a few mic pre's sound like. Yes, all mic pre's sound different. First, let's take a look at a very popular piece of recording hardware. This is an audio interface. These come in all different shapes and sizes and at lots of different price points. The main purpose of this interface is to convert an analog signal into a digital signal. This allows us to record instruments and vocals using a computer and a DAW, such as Pro Tools or GarageBand and Logic. If you want to use a computer to edit and mix music, you have to use an interface. Then, as you're mixing or recording, you want to hear what you're doing inside that DAW. So again, you must convert that digital signal back to analog and use headphones or speakers. This is all done, again, using an audio interface. Now you might hear people refer to this conversion as A to D and D to A, so analog to digital and digital to analog. Nowadays, anyone can afford an interface with a built-in preamp, just like this Motu. However, not all preamps are the same. There are tons of different choices by tons of different manufacturers. Now I bring up this interface because the conversion from analog to digital is very, very important. The interface needs a line level signal in order to give you the best conversion. If you're using a microphone to say record drums or guitar or vocals, that microphone isn't outputting line level signal. It's giving you a mic level signal. So we have a conundrum. Your mic is giving you a mic level signal, which is very low, and your interface needs a line level signal to do the best conversion possible. What do we do? We need to gain up or increase that level and make it line level. And this is the main reason why we use a mic preamp. It's that simple. We need to increase the gain before conversion, or if you're using outboard gear, like a compressor or EQ, we need to increase that mic level to line level to give those pieces of hardware what they need to function at their best. Now this Motu has a bunch of line level inputs and outputs. So we flip it over to its back. We can see it has line level outputs and it has line level inputs on the back as well as two main outputs. These usually go to your monitors, your near field monitors. And then we have a mic preamp on the back. And a mic preamp here on the front. So the preamp is built in to this interface. Now I know by reading the manual that all these different inputs on the front and the back are balanced inputs. For example, an XLR cable is a balanced input. Here we have a balanced quarter inch. We can see the tip, the ring, and the sleeve. And then here is an unbalanced quarter inch. We only have a tip and a sleeve. If balanced is an option, always use it. It's going to help reduce noise and interference. And we'll talk more on this in a later video. All right, so you wanna record, say, a vocal or an acoustic guitar. What we need to do is plug into the interface. Since we're using a mic, we're going to use an XLR. To make it easier, I'm just gonna plug this XLR cable into the back. And since I'm using a condenser microphone, I have to turn on phantom power. And we'll get to that in just a second. But now I can use the trim knob to add gain to this mic level signal in order to make it line level. We'll be able to see that level on the front meter and we'll also be able to see it in our DAW. Now some microphones will require phantom power and it's labeled here as 48 volts. And that's because that's the amount of power that this preamp is supplying to the microphone. I'm using a Shure KSM32 and the onboard circuit on the microphone needs power. Be careful to always leave this off until the microphone is plugged in. And then before you unplug the microphone, you turn this off as well. I always like to leave it off and only turn it on when it's needed because phantom power can also ruin certain types of microphones. In some cases, the input can be too loud. 
For example, if you're recording a very loud guitar amp with a microphone, you might hear clipping or digital distortion. Your meters might clip on the interface and in the DAW as well. In this case, we need to use a pad. This is going to attenuate or bring down the gain before it hits our interface, the conversion, and prevent clipping and digital distortion. When you turn up that gain on your preamp, you're changing gain structure, and we're trying to achieve nominal gain. Now these are big words, these are big concepts, and don't worry, we're going to go into that in great detail in a video coming up. All you need to know right now is that gain turns up that mic level and makes it line level. Now this Motu is an entry level piece of hardware. Now their goal was to make recording as accessible to as many people as possible. In order to do that, they built this unit with inexpensive components. That means when you turn up this gain a lot, you're also going to be adding a lot of noise. Now the next step up would be to use a standalone mic pre like this Golden Age Pre 73. This is an entry level mic pre with not as cheap components. This will allow us to increase the gain with less noise than the Motu. Now why is this gain to noise ratio important? Well, for example, a Shure SM7 needs about 60 dB of gain. That is a ton. If I plugged that Shure SM7 into the Motu, it can't even give me 6 dB of gain. It's gonna give me about 24 dB of gain. If I plugged it into this Pre-73 and increased it by 60 dB, there's gonna be a lot of noise. And that's just due to the quality of components inside of this preamp. So here is the reason why a professional mic pre, like an API, is more expensive than these two units. The internal components are high quality that allow us to increase the gain by 60 dB and up and keep the noise floor very, very low. So $400 compared to a $900 API usually means higher quality components. There are also different types of components. Some preamps have tubes inside and have transformers inside. Some have independent components. Some have circuit boards. This all contributes to the sound and quality of the preamp. As you start looking at different preamps, you'll also notice that they have different features. This also contributes to the price, more flexibility and more options. This Pre-73 has more options than the Motu. On the front, we have our power switch. We have a DI. We also can switch between the inputs on the back and the DI on the front. Here's our phantom power. And we also have an impedance switch. And we'll get to that in a later video as well. Now on this unit, we have two gain stages. We have an input gain and an output gain. We'll talk about that in just a second. Over here on the right, we can flip the phase, and this is very helpful when we are using multiple mics on the same source. For example, we could be recording a snare drum. We have a microphone on the top of the drum, and we have a microphone on the bottom of the drum. If these two microphones aren't in phase, we'll get some cancellation. The phase button on the preamp lets us quickly flip phase and see which one sounds better, in phase or out of phase. And of course, we also have a meter on the front here. Now I'm going to come back and talk about these two gain stages, but first let's take a look at the back of the preamp. On the back here we have a line in, and this is a balanced input. We can use that quarter inch or the XLR input. This is great for recording things like keyboards that output line level. We also have the mic level input. And then over here on the output, we can use a balanced quarter inch or a balanced XLR. And again, remember, if balanced is an option, please use it. And we'll talk about that in a little bit. On the front, we have the DI input. And this is great for recording unbalanced signal, such as a bass or a direct guitar. And again, that DI switch allows us to switch between the DI in the front and the line and mic levels in the back. Now let's talk about the two gain stages. We have an input gain 
and an output gain. Now, preamps can alter the signal depending on the internal circuit and what it's made out of. Some preamps, again, have tubes, others have transformers, and those transformers can be wound with, say, nickel or steel or an alloy. All these different options create the many different types and brands of preamps that we see on the market. Coming up, we're going to take a listen to different types of preamps that are made of tubes, are made of transformers, and have different types of transformers, and see and hear how they add EQ changes, they can add saturation, compression, harmonics, all that fun stuff. And this is referred to as coloring the signal. This is also why a professional recording studio has so many different types of preamps and microphones. They all do different things to the signal. They all sound different. Another example, an SM57 going through a Neve Pre might sound amazing on a snare. Might give it some great harmonics, might give it some punch and some depth. And if we move that over to an acoustic guitar, it might sound flat and dead. To find the right mic preamp combination, takes a good amount of trial and error. And this is part of what makes a recording engineer great. So now let's get back to why we have two different gain stages. The input gain allows us to turn up the signal before it hits components inside the preamp. If that component is a tube, we can drive that tube and get some nice saturation. The output gain then allows us to turn down that signal so we have a line level and we're not clipping the next component in line. So something like this might allow us to drive that circuit at a lot of color, at a lot of distortion, but not blow up the next thing in line, like your interface or an EQ or compressor. If we want a nice pure or transparent sound, we might turn down the input gain and then turn up the transparent or colorless output gain. So this would give us more of a colorless type of signal that more accurately represents whatever we're recording. Now coming up, we're gonna take a listen to different types of preamps, and we're going to drive those preamps and let you hear the differences between a tube pre, a transformer pre, all that fun stuff. Now that you understand what a mic preamplifier is doing and what the interface is doing, let's hook them up. We don't have to use the built-in preamps on your interface. In fact, if you have outboard pre's, I would bet that they sound better. They have a better noise to signal ratio, meaning the signal is much higher than the noise on this unit than on this unit. So again, if you have an outboard pre, it's probably gonna be better than the onboard pre. Let's say we're gonna record an acoustic guitar using a microphone. Well, here's what we have to do. We're gonna take that XLR that's coming from that microphone and plug it in the back. Make sure we use the mic input. There it is. And this XLR is going to be balanced. Next, we're gonna take a balanced quarter inch cable from the output of the pre. And go into the line input of the interface. We're going to ask our musician to play the acoustic guitar. We're then going to adjust the input gain to get the amount of color we want. We're going to adjust the output gain and read the meter on our interface to make sure we aren't blowing it up, we aren't peaking it or clipping it. We can also take a look at our DAW to make sure we're getting nominal gain. And again, we're gonna talk about all those levels in a later video. And since you're using a line level input on the interface, there's no need to adjust trim or gain here. All of that gain is set on the preamp itself. That output knob, that output gain stage, is what controls the input of our interface. So this is how you record a microphone. If you want to record, say, a bass guitar direct, we're going to take an unbalanced quarter inch, plug it into the bass, and then plug it into the DI on the preamp. We need to switch this into DI mode. Again, we're going to set our input gain, add or remove as much color as we want, and then change the output gain so that we aren't clipping or peaking our interface or converter. So again, everything is done on the preamp here, 
not here. A lot of interfaces don't even have preamps built in, and there is no way to change the input gain on the interface. Again, everything is done on that outboard preamp. Now that you understand what the mic pre is for and how it relates to an interface or conversion, let's move on to a real world look at using a mic pre. In order to do this, I called up a really good friend of mine, Brian Ziski. He's an amazing recording and mixing engineer. And together we're gonna tag team and give you a peek into what he does every day while recording and mixing music. In the upcoming videos, we're gonna be using a lot of audio examples. And in order to do a true comparison between different preamps, we had to use the exact same source material. So let me tell you what we did. We recorded a bunch of instruments using a very transparent preamp. Some preamps are known for the amazing color they give the signal, such as a Universal Audio 610. It does an amazing job of adding depth and harmonics and saturation. But other preamps, like a Millennia, do a great job of keeping that signal pure and clean and only adding gain. So that's what we used. We tried our very best to add as little color as possible during this recording phase. Then we ran that recorded signal back through different preamps to see how they color the signal. And this is called reamping. It's done all the time. So that means in some of these shots, we're going to be looking at mic pre's but they aren't going to be patched in a typical way when you record. They're going to be patched for reamping. Now this is cheating just a bit, but the idea here is to help you hear the differences between the different types of preamps, and using the same source material will really help you hear the differences. We're going to run that signal through the Motu, so you hear what a consumer grade preamp sounds like, and then we're going to run it through different professional grade preamps to hear how they can color and add depth and add character to that source material. In the next video, let's join Brian Ziski in his studio. I'll see you then.